Get your side shred. Kind of nice. I've, <laughs> I've put my up arrow on there. Now, I'm not going to tighten this all the way yet. Uh, main reason being is that this thing will need to kind of float a little bit to match up with your main shroud. But I'm going to get it pretty close. We'll get it most of the way in to where you can still wiggle it just a hair and then we'll tighten all the shroud at one time. So I still just left it a little bit loose. Pump side shroud. Same with this one, gonna leave it just, leave it to where it can float just a little bit. Till we get the main cover on the side, then we can tighten them all down. Still have this shroud right here. And it's attached to the throttle assembly. Putting the spring on the governor arm first. Putting it on the throttle assembly. We'll put this uh, governor back on. Got the spring on. Onto the throttle assembly here. Just fits down on the case. I'm just gonna get this a little bit more than finger tight for right now. Actually, this one, we will probably need to tighten all the way because it needs the two wrenches. And you have to do it with the flywheel in uh, before we get the cover on because I don't you won't be able to reach it. Okay, we've got the bottom on where it's supposed to go. Eight millimeter on the inside. 10 millimeter. Now it looks like this can be adjusted slightly. But what I'm looking at is a little, wanting a little free play and I'm just assuming this because I really don't know till we start running it. Just want to make sure that spring had a little, just at least a little bit of looseness in it because it is your uh, throttle stop. And if it's pulling on that governor arm, I think it's going to keep pushing fuel. Because it, it allows that arm to go all the way to no, a no fuel situation and that's what kills it. Primary fan shroud. Stick it up so I can see what I'm doing a little better, better to align things. I'm going to start a couple of these just real loosely so I'm not fighting it. Looks like everything's just about to line up now. So I'm gonna start all my screws and then we'll tighten them all down. I'm leaving enough room to where I can drip some uh, Loctite in there. So I'm only getting everything a couple of threads started. Fortunately, all these were the same length. These are some of the ones that I did earlier. I'm gonna make sure I get Loctite in them. 
Then I'll go through with the ratchet momentarily and tighten everything up a little more. Getting ready to finish the uh, final assembly of this engine. Um, today, my brother Daryl came in town. He's going to watch. He's thinking about getting one of these, so he's wanting to go over a little bit of this with me. Well, once my brother Daryl found out about this, he decided that my other brother Daryl wanted to come and join in too. So between the two of them, they might have enough brain power to make this happen. <laughs> No. Yeah, you can just get in. Yep. Brothers out. They decided they wanted no part of this shit. <laughs> Putting on the cam cover. Earlier, since I don't have a uh, cam. Brothers a jet engine mechanic. He can do this shit in his sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, my brother's been working on jet engines for about 30 years now, so he's probably making fun of my archaic machine here. Whenever I took the uh, valve cover gasket off, it did disturb a little bit of the gasket on here. Um, I, again, I'm using the three bond. Uh, it's the 1184. This is what I put on the back case on that seal too. This is some of the gnarliest stuff you've ever seen in your life. You can do metal to metal with it. In this case, the gasket's not in bad shape. It just has one little tiny tear. So all I'm gonna do is put a one little drop on that when I install it. You see right there where the split of the gasket is? And this will also glue a gasket in place pretty good, but I don't want it all over it. I just want one little speck right there where this gasket has that tear. The reason, another reason that I really love this uh, particular sealer is if you try using silicon sealers, which I, I really don't like unless it's in a specified area, they can actually have a tendency uh, where the, you have a little bit of overrun on the inside. They'll make these little balls of silicon as they get old will drop off into your cylinder and can stop up things. Uh, especially inside of uh, motorcycle engine cases. I've seen people put put it together with silicon and it winds up dropping silicone balls off and completely stopping up an oil passage and burning up an engine. And if, all, if they'd have just used the correct case sealer, they would have never had an issue at all. I'm gonna try to find, see if I can find a uh, gasket for these if not i'm probably going to make have one on hand because like i've said in one of my earlier videos this is one piece of this that i'm almost positive you will have to take off from time to time uh, because of the crankcase ventilation port and this thing being a diesel it'll be notoriously dirty and uh, it will have to be cleaned This only having two bolts in it, and it was such a large surface area, I am torquing this down to seven foot-pounds with these little screws. Because I don't want to warp that cover, which is what will happen if you over-tighten it with only two surface screws. Put the valve cover back on, or I'm sorry, the uh, little uh, inspection cover for the reed valve. It's just the four little Phillips screws. Definitely don't want to over tighten these. Time to install the injector. Uh, whenever we do the injector, remember you have your steel insert that goes in. You have a, a copper inject, a copper washer inside that insert. When you place your injector in, I'm going to go ahead and put the retainer on it, but I'm not going to completely tighten the retainer down as of right now. I'm gonna wait until after I get the fuel line lined up before we torque this down. That way you know you have everything in the correct position before you tighten it. Of 
you want to make sure that this bracket is pretty centered on this. You want it to be kind of level. Even if you torque down these, a bracket like this, if it's off center a hair, then you're still not going to be torquing down your injector straight. So you want, and I make sure you go side to side, sneak up on it. I started off by going 10 foot pounds, 15 foot pounds, that you keep that bracket level as you're doing that process. After we have that tight, I'm going ahead and tightening down my fuel line just to make sure it seats good and it feels like it seats really nicely. While it's easy access and I've got my wrench, we're loosening that off. So that way here in just a minute, when we finish up, we can prime it. Next thing we're putting on is gonna be the exhaust. The exhaust on this thing, it, uh, it, it's got a real nice thick exhaust washer. These do have lock, uh, lock washers built onto the uh, fasteners. And I like that because thread locker, unless you use a real high heat thread locker, does not work very well on exhaust areas. Uh, unless it's specifically designed as a high heat thread locker. And in that case, sometimes it's really hard to get your fasteners undone. We're gonna go ahead and torque these down. I don't, I don't like warping flanges, so that's the reason we're torquing it down. The number one reason that you use a torque wrench on fasteners, most people actually over tighten fasteners you use a torque wrench is actually to make sure that you don't stretch your fasteners and pull threads and warp things. Uh, so it actually it's to prevent you from over tightening it more so than it is under tightening. On with the intake. The intake, whenever I inspected it, it was pretty interesting. What we had with the intake, and I'll show a, a close-up picture. You have these two bushings that are inserted inside this plastic. They go all the way through. What that does is when you have your screw hits that metal, that metal bushing, that metal spacer, and then it tightens up against the metal spacer on the inside, and that prevents you from over-tightening and crushing plastic. Uh, so what I did, it was sticking up so much that there was no way that it could actually flatten this gasket all the way through. So I ground down the two bushings and then took a file, leveled it out a little bit, and then got it on a surface plate with some sandpaper and got this really nice and smooth. So now it'll be able to seal. Um, one of the number one reasons for engine, engine failure, whether it be a bad air filter or improper intake tightening, uh, dirty air is probably the number one reason for engine failure. Uh, and I have a buddy of mine that has about a thousand miles on a buggy right now that can testify for that or a side by side, but I'm not going to say his name, but he'll watch this video and know who I'm talking about. It tends to cost a whole engine, but hey, <laughs> who needs to service things? This is another one of those areas that I'm gonna make sure that I uh, torque down, because it is plastic with just two flanges going into metal. If you ever warp this plastic intake, it will never seal pro uh, appropriately again without having to re-level it every time. So you're better off just tighten it down correctly the first time. I did put a little bit of thread locker on these screws. This diesel engine is probably gonna uh, vibrate relatively violently. We're gonna do these at uh, nine foot pounds. Sneak up on it side to side. That keeps you from warping your flange and makes your gasket seal equally from side to side.
onto the gas tank. I've already put this uh, insert in. I put a little bit of lube in there, a little bit of oil. I made sure and used some uh, 100,000 mile super synthetic oil on those. So that way it slips on real easy and it'll last forever and won't wear the engine out. I've already put a little bit of Loctite on these fasteners just to speed the process up. These will be tightened down to uh, 15 foot pounds. It's hard to believe I'm almost to the final piece of this little puzzle. All right, putting this bracket on here with the two rubber mounts. I already have Loctite on my screws. I prefer to use blue lock, uh, blue locker, a uh, thread locker in most uh, areas on an aluminum engine. I don't like using red in aluminum. I don't mind so much using the red going uh, from uh, metal to metal, but going into aluminum, I, I usually prefer a medium locker. Hurt fall. Last but not least to the assembly process, your fuel return line. Sometimes with these little uh, uh, spring clamps on here, you put just an ever so light layer of lube, putting them on, then that will allow them to go on even with your springs in their correct position and it still can't pull off. So I was able to slip that on even with the spring already clamped down. And the same for the bottom. That allowed those to slip on and what will even with that oil on there, these are a non-pressurized line. That's just a fuel line. They will not come off. There we go. We are fully assembled. Now, we're getting ready to go ahead and prime our fuel system, and then we'll test it in a minute. Lessons learned on one of these motors. I had it all, all assembled a minute ago, and then I got ready to bleed this thing, and I tested it and I could not get my 17 millimeter inch in here to uh, actually break this off. I wanna bleed it from the top just to get more air out of the lines instead of from the bottom or out of the line. And so I went ahead and took the exhaust back off and then that way I can bleed it and then I'll reassemble the exhaust when it's over. Back off the top nut, you will operate your decompression lever and you'll sit there and pull the cord until uh, you get fuel oozing out from under this top fuel line, and then you can back it in. And once you do that, you're getting real close to a point to where it should fire you know, fairly quickly. That's the theory anyway, but we're gonna find out. Crack your throttle open just a smidge, just a little bit above an idle area. I wouldn't exactly call this a warm engine. I mean, it's just been ran for probably 30 seconds maybe at this point. 
pull, find your compression, push your decompression lever, pull it one time really firm. Just be willing to release that if it kicks back. It was pretty obvious right from the get-go when I fired this thing off that the air filter housing was going to need a stabilizer bracket. In the next video, I'm going to uh, do a modification to build a real simple bracket to help stabilize the air filter housing. I'm also going to add a uh, fuel cutoff switch to be able to turn the machine off real quickly without having to unscrew the throttle knob and move it to a different position. I'm also going to add a quick reference sheet with the torque specs and uh, I also will be doing a cold start at 34 degrees Fahrenheit with, uh, with no starting fluids or anything like that to show you how this thing does. Um, I really would appreciate it if you guys uh, like and subscribe to my channel and uh, also in the descriptions I've got links to some of the products and so forth I use. I have that on, on all of the uh, pages I'm putting down. So. Um, I sure hope you guys enjoy this and check out the uh, next video in this series and we'll see how well this little engine does. Thanks a lot.